Okay, story time. Same cup of tea, same outfit, I same night. I figured it would be better to film this video separate from the other. Um, I didn't want to bog down the other video with me telling stories about my life, but I thought this might be kind of amusing. Um, a while back in one of my videos, I mentioned that I had asked my husband for paternity testing for our kids. And a bunch of guys in the comments looked at that and said, oh, yeah, that's it. Sure sign that she cheated. And uh, they were their usual charming, rude, obnoxious selves. And uh, I just kind of gave up on it. It was like, okay, whatever. One of these days I'll do a video talking about the reasons why I asked for paternity testing and why I'm very open about asking for paternity testing. Um, we had our first kid and we were in the hospital afterward. And I was recovering from having my very first child, which was a, a really beautiful and really exciting and really a huge moment for me, huge part of my life. Um, a life-changing experience, an extremely painful experience, and so I couldn't really walk very well. <laughs> um, I handled subsequent um, deliveries better, but that first one just was difficult. So I was lying in a hospital bed, and they had a bunch of paperwork that I had to fill out about this new baby, you know, who the parent was, um, who grandparents were. I don't, I don't even remember what it all it was. It asked me like a ton of questions about my education level, my income, my ethnicity, you know, just all this, all this information that they, that they, they keep. And so <laughs> I, I couldn't have my husband fill it out. I had to fill it out. So I'm sitting there with a pencil in a hospital bed, feeling extremely uncomfortable on painkillers, writing out the information in this form and there was very very little information about the father of our child there was a brief note in that form regarding the father of that child namely i needed to name him which okay so i put my husband's name down and also um, a note telling me that if he wished to contest the name that I had put down, first of all, it was illegal for me to put down the wrong name on the form. So that wasn't a problem. I already knew who the father was. If he wished to contest my claim, he had one year after the birth of the child to do so. So we have the baby. He finds out that I was sneaking off with Chad while we were, you know, also trying to conceive a child, like actively, very, very actively trying to conceive a child. And uh, he can then ask for a paternity test and contest my claim, and he can get out of that. He can get out of being responsible for the baby that I said was his, which is really awesome. He only has one year to do it, and I kind of looked at it and was like, well, you know, at some point, the kid does get attached to you, and you do become a part of their life, and, you know, maybe they're just trying to prevent you from turning around and walking away. Ah. <sighs> I, I don't get it, but okay, okay. So I looked at my husband, I was like, okay, as far as this regards us, you have one year to get a paternity test to verify beyond any shadow of a doubt that this is your kid. Now, it's a bit redundant because he already knows that's his kid because, you know, it's it's one of those things. You know, I go to him, I say, hey, we should have a baby. He says, yeah, we should have a baby. We start, you get the idea. And, um, you know, a month or two later, we have a baby. We were actually really good at it in those early years when we were first trying to get pregnant. And we could usually time it to eh, about a month. <laughs> I literally, like, we were so good that we could actually schedule our dentist appointments, my dentist appointments, around my pregnancies because they got to give you those x-rays. And so it was kind of like, eh, you're probably not going to be able to give me the x-ray next time because I'm probably going to be pregnant. Um which was a really great feeling. It was really fun. And obviously those days are gone now, but at the time it was really cool. So there wasn't exactly a lot of doubt. Like we knew well in advance that we wanted to have a baby. I wasn't really leaving his side at any point, And I was constantly chasing after him. Um, you know, as, as a girl will do. And so, you know, it, there was no doubt in his mind. There was absolutely no doubt in my mind, but I told him I wanted a paternity test. And when he asked me why, 
because he knew I wasn't cheating on him and I knew I wasn't cheating on him and we both knew that he was the father of the child so you know why would you want a paternity test it's it's redundant um I told him I wanted to set a precedent I told him that you know we might have a son someday we do have a son now and there might come a point where he has a girl claiming that a child is his and he doesn't necessarily feel completely trusting of her and he might feel horribly guilty at the idea of getting a paternity test he's going to feel considerably less guilty getting a paternity test if there's any kind of doubt whatsoever if we just kind of casually look at him and go oh get a paternity test we did that it sets a precedent it makes it acceptable it normalizes it I think I think everybody should be getting paternity tests. I think that since we have the technology and since it's available, it should just be standard procedure. A baby is born in a hospital and immediately they either A, offer to give a paternity test or even better, have a paternity test that they just automatically give. Maybe there are different opt-out programs because, I mean, people do use sperm donors sometimes. That's a thing. Um, if you have fertility issues, it's a real thing. So you can opt out of a paternity test if, you know, if you already have paternity issues at hand. But generally speaking, it's going to be the norm. And it should be, it should be normal. Honest women who clearly were not cheating on their husbands should be getting paternity tests because it normalizes paternity tests. It gives men a very clear and unquestionable knowledge that this is their child. Like... I understand that men are very, very good at recognizing their children's faces in a crowd. I understand that men are, are naturally designed to recognize their own offspring. But um, men get fooled sometimes. It happens. And we have the technology to prevent it from happening, so why do we continue to allow it to happen? It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. So... <laughs> the time that our first child was born and also again at the time that our second child was born and yet again at the time that our third child was born I always told him okay the clock is ticking you have a year get a paternity test and he has consistently said no because well because he, he there's there's absolutely no doubt that these are his kids like nobody in the world doubts that these are his kids except for some dingbats online who really don't know me they don't know how much they look like their father and uh, honestly, I think they're just trolling me because they're hoping to get a reaction. But still, um, in case anyone was wondering or thinking that it seems suspicious that I would be wanting a paternity test, that's why I think honest women who, who care about their husbands and love their husbands and very obviously have not been having sex with anyone except for their husbands, they should get paternity tests. They should do that to support their husbands. They should do that to show him... That he, that he has the same rights as they do to know 100% with absolute certainty that's his kid. Now I understand that there is, <laughs> as a side note, I do understand there is a condition called chimerism, I believe it's called that. Basically, um, sometimes two twins will kind of absorb each other in the womb and there's mixed DNA inside of a single human being. Um, there was a, a funny story I read once about a woman who gave birth to some kids and DNA testing said that those children were not hers. And she almost got arrested, or maybe she did get arrested, for trying to fake her parenthood of these children in a welfare application. Because DNA testing said the kids weren't hers, but she knew they were hers because she'd been there when they were born. Um, so that was a messy situation to clear up. And the answer to that whole messy confusion was that she had chimerism. And parts of her DNA were not actually her DNA, but a twin's DNA. And so it didn't quite line up on a DNA test. Weird shit happens, but generally speaking, for the most, you know, for the majority of the time, and in those very, very strange occasions, you can probably clear it up reasonably quickly or at least look into it. Um, you know, 99.999% of the time, that's not the case. Get a DNA test. Normalize it. Let men have the same kind of certainty that we as women have had, you know, since the dawn of time. If it comes out of me, it must be mine. Well, you know, if the DNA says, says it's his, then it is his. There's no questioning 
There's no asking. There's no worrying. Um, I, I, I hear all these arguments as to why that shouldn't be done. I hear a lot of, well, you know, the man might get violent and angry and hurt the woman or the child. And, you know, women who've just given birth are vulnerable. And God knows I understand that. I've given birth. I've been vulnerable. Um, but it, but it's not okay to perpetuate, perpetuate a lie. It's just not, it's not okay to, it, it's not okay to deliberately and intentionally keep people from the truth. It, it's not okay. And, you know, there are other arguments like he might leave the woman. Well, was she cheating on him? Did she lie to him and say that it was his kid when it wasn't? Maybe he should leave her. I, I think I would leave somebody if they did that to me. So, you know, why not? Why not? She did a bad thing. Why, why should she not face consequences? Well, the kid would have to face consequences. Oh, God, help me from all the... It's for the children arguments. Um, I never really liked that argument when it came to... I mean, I understand it when it comes to abortion in some senses, like if it's a perfectly healthy child. I don't understand it in cases of abortion when it comes to, like, rape or serious deadly, incurable diseases, as I'm sure you guys already know from my other videos. Um, I don't like that argument when it comes to, when it comes to paternity issues. I mean, we live in a country where there are like a million different programs that women can enroll in where Papa government will step in and take care of them and their illegitimate child, you know, or, or maybe she could just make Tyrone foot the bill. I mean, he stuck his dick in it. Why can't he pay for it? Instead of the guy who isn't biologically the father. Um, I, it was funny. I was talking to my dad and uh, he mentioned that there is actually an alarming number. He, he found out some number. I, I, need, I, I didn't look it up. I was just listening to him. I was like, oh, I never knew that. Um, there is an alarming number of women is an alarming, yes, that's the correct way to say it, is an alarming number of women in this world at this time who are giving birth, who do not actually have any clear understanding of who the father of their child is. And I actually know a woman who got pregnant who didn't know who the father of their child was. Um, you know, DNA testing could clear up a lot of that confusion. And in her case, it did clear up the confusion. She had to go get a DNA test because they didn't know who the dad was. Um... We live in a strange times, and in these strange times, it is not wholly uncommon for a woman to have had sex with multiple men in the same week or on the same night, and um, she might need some DNA testing, <laughs> but I think, I think more people than just that should be getting it. I think everybody should get it. I think it should be universal. I don't think it should be necessarily required. Again, there are cases where people have used sperm donors. They already know that the dad is not the dad. But I think that I think it should be a normal thing. I think it should be so I think it should be so normal that people don't question it. Like, okay, uh, we're gonna need you know after you give birth, you're in their hospital bed, there are people coming and going like every all the time. Like you cannot sleep after you've given birth. As long as you're in the hospital you can't sleep. And that's why I try to get out of the hospital as quickly as possible so I can go home and sleep because labor is tiring and I get tired and I want to sleep afterward. There are doctors, nurses, caretakers, test givers. Um, they're coming in to test the baby's hearing. They're coming in to check the baby's blood. They're coming in to check on you. They're coming in to check on, on your uterus and whether or not it's, um, it's contracting back into its original shape the way it should. There's a, a, a lactation specialist who comes in to visit you. You never get to have any time alone after you give birth. And so is it really so weird if among all the other people who come bustling into your, into your hospital room to check on you, somebody doesn't come, you know, kind of bustling in going, okay, um, is the father present? I need a cheek swab really quick. I hate to bother you. You know, they knock on the door before they come in. You know, why, why can't they do that? Like, I would love that. Oh, we're here for, we're here for dad this time. We just need our cheek swab. Thank you very much. Um, we'll have your paternity test back to you in one week or however long it takes, a month, whatever. Um, 
why don't they do that? Why can't they do that? And I think the reason they don't do that is because, number one, there are too many women who are like, oh, but think of the children. Or, oh, but think of the women who live in poverty who really need that man's money. Um, which I hate that argument. I mean, or, or, one day we're strong, independent women who don't need no man. And then the very next breath, we're, we're, we're women who need somebody to pay for that baby that we had with another man. Um, screw that. Are, are we strong and independent or are we not? Which is it? You can't have both. Um, so I, I find it very annoying (laughs) that they make that argument, but also like, I think there aren't enough women in this world who are advocating for paternity testing. Um, I was, I was looking online and I found a, an organization called WAPF. Do you pronounce that? WAPF? WAPF? Women Against Paternity Fraud. That's what it is. They would probably advocate for paternity testing, universal paternity testing. Um, I don't know how numerous that uh, that organization is. I think it's got like over a million subscribers on YouTube if you want to look it up. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but I, I think there need to be more women advocating for regular paternity testing. Do I know who the father of my child is? Absolutely I know. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in his mind. Let's get a paternity test so that if one of our children or grandchildren ever has any kinds of doubts, it's not a weird thing. It's just a, oh, hey, yeah, let's get a paternity test. My mom did it. My grandparents did it. My friends all did it. Everybody I know did it. Let's just do it. Why can't we just do it? So, yeah, I asked my husband for a paternity test, and I'm not ashamed. I'll talk to you guys later.